One of the things that will get you in quite a lot of trouble today is the assumption that despite external differences, everybody isn't exactly the same beneath the surface. This is no more true than when it comes to men and women. Now in the traditionalist conception, men and women are supposed to complement rather than compete with one another. On top of that, they have unique roles to play, which brings harmony to the family and the society at large. But in the liberalist feminist understanding that the modern Western world now toils under, differences between men and women are simply culturally mandated. That's why if you notice these days that men tend to be drawn towards more pioneering and adventurous activities, while women tend to be softer and the big three C's, compassionate, caring and chaotic, you'll be called a sexist. Sexism is, so the theory goes, just a way of perpetuating male power in society. And remember, feminism is for men too, so all you need to do is get rid of your toxic masculinity and the world will sink into some utopia. But many of us have noticed this hasn't quite gone to plan for the liberals. In fact, it's caused a complete mess, and the more we try and pretend that men and women are exactly the same, the more mess we make. So what was once that warm feminine compassion, ideal for community building and family rearing, has been manipulated into a sort of toxic empathy or pathological altruism. Those natural feminine drivers have been hijacked by radical woke ideology that tells modern women that anybody who's not a white straight male is immediately the victim, no matter the situation at hand. This whole issue has now got completely out of hand and is essentially destroying the Western world from the inside. I've got a few examples here to show you what I mean. Now, just so you're aware, I've had to re-edit this part of the video because I was about to show you many cases, some of which are active, and you're not allowed to really comment on them because that's contempt of court. So rather than focusing on any specifics, I hope you can appreciate the general point I'm trying to make. Now, anybody who hasn't been brainwashed into the woke ideology will be fully aware that some of our new arrivals have brought some practices with them that aren't very welcome, things such as FGM and honour killing spring to mind. Yet, if you have drank the woke Kool-Aid, simply hearing me say that would be evidence that I've fallen into some close-minded, chauvinistic, heteronormative, white male false consciousness. I, according to the Wokies, fail to spot my own innate privilege that ignores exactly the same things going on in the Western world due to my own cultural supremacy, not to mention the historical oppression that people of colour have faced, means that we've made their lives so bad they have no choice but to act this way. Believing such things and parroting such opinions would make the people at The Guardian and the BBC think that you're a good, moral person, up to date with the trendy ideology. There's only one problem with all this, however, and that's that none of it's true. What's really going on here is those people with a feminine disposition can't bear the brutality of reality, and henceforth they segue in an ideology that can protect them from the hardships of life. In essence, it takes the sting out of awful events if you can take the blame away from the people who should be held accountable and have to face the very difficult challenges that come with that, and blame instead your own people who you know that you're safe with. This is why the white liberal feminists of the Western world seem to hate nobody more than white Western men. That's why white liberal women can't acknowledge that some people coming here may be bringing cultural practices we don't like. That would be racist after all. Again, I've had to edit this part of the video because I have an example of a white Western woman in the national media blaming all men and downplaying a situation which is very culturally specific. You just have to trust me on that one till the case is done and I can show you what I'm talking about. And what's this woman doing here? Well, she's westernising and detoxifying the issue so she can bear it. Here's another appalling example of what I mean. Remember the story I covered a few days ago of a poor 37-year-old NHS worker, a mother of three, who was orally raped to death on a park bench by a Mohammed Lido? Yet here's a feminist online implying that all men should have to deal with women's murderous fury for this. Yet when someone suggests that something could be done to put an end to these, i.e. vetting who you let into the country, this woman gets very upset because she thinks this man is implying that these sorts of things are only an issue with men of colour. Again, it's too hard for the liberal mind to comprehend that the savagery of this may be something we've imported. Not saying that sexual abuse issues don't happen within the indigenous community of Britain, but the savagery and the scale is something that's new. Now, if I was to point out to this woman that we have a problem here and that a female Islamic scholar in Egypt states that Allah allows Muslim men to rape non-Muslim women to humiliate them, she would, of course, just call me the racist and the bigot. Of course, the liberal woman believes that pointing out reality is a form of hatred. 
But of course, as I say many times on this channel, I'm not motivated by hatred at all. I simply, like many people, want to see what's really going on in the world and then try and figure out the best path in order to deal with the problems we have. Case in point again, yesterday I made a video about Chris Cabba. He was killed by a firearms officer for ramming a police car. Of course, the BLM types came out and claimed this was an unlawful killing, but it was proved in a court of law that it was not. Again, it doesn't matter to the female liberal mind whether the police officer was innocent or not. What matters is Chris Cabba was black and they're a minority group. Henceforth, he's innocent. So here are the white liberal women complaining about it in London. Here's another recent case. This is a Lydia Thorpe. She's a left-wing radical senator in Australia. Apparently she's an Aboriginal, but she doesn't look very Aboriginal to me, but I think she's got a grandma who's an Aborigine or something. She's very upset with King Charles. She yelled at him, stating it's not his land and to get out. To the liberal female mind, remember, Britain, the royal family and the British Empire are pure evil. However, let's be honest, would these women rather live in modern Australia, one of the most advanced nations in the world due to the British, or would they rather live in the outback if the British never came where you'd probably die of old age at 22. And finally we're now seeing that the politics have got nothing to do with us have been welcomed here due to this mad policy of accepting people from all over the world. Now again to the people who are heavily invested in the Israel-Palestine thing. I'm not invested. I don't take a side. The only thing I'll say is I feel very sorry for the Palestinian children who seem to be suffering incredibly badly for no fault of their own. The reason I'm showing this because the white liberal woman would take the side of this migrant who's very angry and yelling at these Americans. Well, they're going to get their wish soon. Increasingly, European peoples around the Western world are shrinking in number. And your utopia with people from the third world will soon become a reality. Hello, guys. Can we ask you standing for Palestine? No, thank you. Can we ask you standing for a human to stop killing kids in Gaza? No, we're good. It's, it's a human question. It's a humanity question. Can you say free Palestine no. or stop the genocide? No. Why? Are you Zionism? No. Huh, where are you from? America. America. Fuck America. America okay. killing kids, you know? All right. Yeah, be shame. Be shame you are American. Be shame, man. That's a traditional modern European welcome for an American visiting our lands there. But this is what happens when you move away from your tradition. It allows poisonous ideologies to enter, and they've manipulated the female mind especially. I'd include liberal men in the female mind as well. They've essentially turned their back on tradition and masculinity. But now we're ruled by good, correct, moral people who are intellectually superior to us, don't you know? But don't you remember the road to hell being paved with something or other? Worth remembering that as we move into the coming chaos. As always, these are just my thoughts. Thank you for watching. Do let me know what you think down below. And if you're new, do consider subscribing to the channel.